This is Dan Meyer with RCR Wireless News at the Telecom Council's Innovation Showcase here in California. And who am I speaking with here today? Uh, I'm Evan Conway with Ad Parlor. Great, Evan. Well, maybe give a little overview of what the company does and how you participate in the uh, in the telecom space. Uh, absolutely. So Ad Parlor is an existing company right now that basically is in the digital media buying space. So we buy uh, media across you know the biggest platforms in the industry: Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, you know YouTube, uh, things like that. So kind of the biggest places where ad budgets are moving. We've got a big, sophisticated platform. We work directly with advertisers and agencies. You know, really some of the biggest brands. You know uh, that you would have heard of to help them do kind of smarter digital media ad buying, as as it relates to telecom and really all sorts of companies that have uh, really interesting data sets. We're creating partnerships with them in a very privacy safe way to kind of utilize some of this data to really you know, do smarter digital media buying. And obviously the privacy part of this is a big, a big, I'm guessing a big part of your kind of what you're bringing to the market there. I know in the telecom space in general, privacy is always a big concern for cooperators. What's, I guess, what is your unique uh, uh, business case or business model when it comes to the privacy aspect of, of what right. you're bring, bringing out there? Yeah. Well, I think the biggest thing is, um, first of all, we're in the early stages, not us, but I mean just the whole industry is in the early stages of really figuring this out. So telcos recognize, uh, you know, that they kind of need some additional businesses, leverage additional assets, and so we really do view this as a partnership and not just as some kind of cliche word, but if you don't start exercising the data muscle now, you're not going to be a very good place a year or two from now. So, so this really is figuring out the right answers in a closed loop manner with these telcos. So, in our case, that closed loop, you know, phrase is really important. Mm -hmm. So, the data never leaves. Um, um, often, it never leaves the telco itself. Mm -hmm. So, for example, in Asia, we've set up a joint venture with Exiata. They own greater than 50% of the joint venture, so the data still is just within their own ownership structure. It never goes out, it's never shared with an advertiser, it's never shared with a brand, and we're using you know, the data then to figure out interesting ways to target to then go buy this media. But, but again, the data itself never gets shared with any of these people that are kind of using it. Um, that kind of becomes you know, one of the key you know, points. The other, the other thing is we're not going out and sharing it on these various public exchanges uh, you know, or private exchanges, mm -hmm. depending on your use of the word. This really is in closed loop with, with Google and Facebook and, and people like that, where we're going out and creating targeted sets and then going out and buying ads on these major platforms kind of without passing along the attributes you know, to, the, to the platform we're buying on. Makes sense. Now, the deal, deal you guys have with Exiata in, in Asia, is that kind of your typical uh, business, uh, how you go to the operators kind of as a partnership, or is that maybe a one-off, or what's your general, when you go to operator, what's right. kind of your general okay. business uh, uh, pitch for those guys? Well, these are very big companies, of <laughs> course, uh, and so, you know, we can't be the tail wagging the dog, you know, um, you know they have a, a great deal of say in, <laughs> in what the, uh, the partnership would look like. In that uh, particular case, um, you know, it really was decided that it would be a joint venture, and I think we'll probably bring in more partners, you know, other telcos into that into that uh, joint venture uh, in Asia. Mm -hmm. um, but it could look very different in different places. It could be more of a commercial agreement in some other, you know, parts of the country where, you know, we're doing tests now in a few different parts of uh, of the world, you know, that aren't necessarily a joint venture. So, so I think there's a few different possibilities, uh, really depending on the needs of uh, the telco partner. You got to be flexible this time, this day and age, correct? Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Very good. Well, how important is this event here for you guys? Obviously, it does seem like it's a, a very condensed way to kind of meet with a lot of different companies in, in, in a short amount of time. How important is this, and how important is what the telecom council is able to provide for you uh, in kind of these sort of, this, this sort of environment? Yeah. Well, we're new to this as a company. You know, since I've worked uh, for carriers before, you know, I'd participated uh, on the other side of it, mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, and it's really interesting uh, to see both sides of the equation, you know. So being on the uh, on the carrier side, it is awesome to be able to come and see, you know, 10, 15, 20 different companies in a you know kind of a one day setting. Mm -hmm. um, that would take a lot of trips and a lot of time, you know, and organizational uh, efforts sure. otherwise. So it's really interesting in that sense. Now, from the smaller company side, um, a lot of smaller companies just really struggle to deal, you know, with the size and the bureaucracy and 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 the difficulty of kind of getting your foot in the door. Mm -hmm. 
this is a really interesting way to kind of meet some of the you know, smart, innovative people whose, whose actual jobs it is to bring innovative ideas to carriers. And again, in a one-day session, you know, quite inexpensively, you know, we can take a day or two and meet, uh, you know, 15 or 20 different carriers one day, you know, compared to I've been out of the country 75 out of the last 125 days meeting with 30 carriers around the world. This is dramatically easier. <laughs> and obviously with your history as well, you've got some uh, inside knowledge on what these uh, operators are looking for too, so it's a little built-in advantage for you guys yeah. as well. I think so. It's, uh, it's, it, it really is interesting, and that's why I'm really not casually using the word partnership. I think we've got a reasonable feel for kind of what some of the concerns are, you know, and, uh, and one of those concerns, by the way, is creating a business that's big enough to matter. Mm -hmm. um, I think so many of the ideas that, uh, that get pitched, particularly as it relates to data, are interesting, they're smart, but even if successful, aren't that big. And, uh, you know, when you're dealing with 10 to $100 billion companies, boy, just creating a, a small business it may be interesting, but uh, it's never really going to get off the ground. And so that, that's one of the key things, I think, for some of these smaller companies to really think through, you know, when they're pitching, uh, you know, a big, serious uh, telecom company. I was just speaking with AT&T the other day, and that was the one thing that they mentioned to me was, you know, when they're dealing with small companies, their biggest piece of advice for a small company is make something that matters, yeah. you know, and that seems to be key, right? If you don't have something that actually matters to a big multi-billion dollar mm -hmm. company, mm -hmm. it's hard to get your foot in the door. Yeah. It's probably true in any business you're starting, but it's highlighted and it bites you right from the beginning if you haven't thought through that here. And uh, that's something in our particular case, you know, we really have thought through because the, the budgets, the, the big multi-million dollar ad budgets are shifting to these uh, kind of major social video platforms. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, and one of the real interesting twists that's a big change over the last two years, in my opinion, is now the telco's data really does matter. Because I think uh, what people don't uh, often think through is these big new social networks are all mobile. I mean, it's just kind of unbelievable. It is not like the old days of, of the web. Even just a year, two, three years ago, media buying Mobile wasn't that important. It was a tiny part of the budgets, and uh, it was just interesting experiments. Now, the biggest, most interesting, most expensive, the huge budgets, the ones that the CMOs of the country are looking at are Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and guess what? Those are all dominated by mobile. So now, it really is very different. A telco's data is valuable as they start to think about you know, how to create great experiences, great media messages on these mobile platforms. Yeah, and it does seem like even those companies that you mentioned, the Facebooks of the world, they talk about the importance of mobile to their overall business case nowadays. That's, that's a big and growing part of what they're doing. It's dumb. I just saw on uh, LinkedIn this morning, I think they said uh, that somewhere around 90% of Twitter's advertising revenue is going to be mobile this year. Yeah. It's a changing market out there, that's for sure. It's unbelievable. Yeah. It's fantastic. And it's an opportunity for telcos now really to get in the game, you know, as kind of Chet and Sharma's view of this fourth wave. Yeah. This is a serious part of that. Very good. Well, great insight today. We definitely appreciate it. Great. Thank you very much. All right. And this is Dan Meyer with RCR Wireless News at the Telecom Council's Innovation Showcase. Thanks for watching.